call the meeting to order and greet anybody who's watching uh, at home. We're glad to have you. This is a meeting, a monthly meeting of the Hadley Committee on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So in your packet, you have uh, Pat's clerk report from the May meeting. And I'll take a motion to accept the, yep, to accept the minutes. I, I have a question. Um, in the handout, we all agreed to contribute to that effort to, and did we all contribute? Hang on a sec, because we have to, before we discuss it, I need a second for the motion. Okay. And now discussion. Okay. So your question is? Uh, item four old business handout for town meeting. Did uh, Margaret get reimbursed from any of us for that handout? Um, thank you, Wayne. No, but it turned out to be like twenty dollars, so I was that was fine. It was nowhere near like what I was thinking. Uh, and by the way, we I came home with fifty of them. I want to say so that means we got rid of like eighty. I, I mean, get got rid of. I mean, eighty were taken, which I was that's real. Good. I picked okay, up some at Costco too. You picked up some, and I have them at home. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. less than eight. <laughs> I figured we could distribute them at another session. Perfect. 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 But not 80. I didn't have 80. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, like, a small staff. Okay. All right. Anything else about? I noticed a couple of typos in the paragraph under Juneteenth. In the top line, CDEI proposed Juneteenth, pro proposed CDEI proposed. The okay. word proposed is there twice, and you know, pick one. And then in the highlighted part, hog on the hog, it should be high on the hog. I'm guessing that was an autocorrect. Oh, you're kind. It could have been a human, <laughs> a human <laughs> error, too, though. Yeah, it could have been a brain autocorrect. But yeah. yeah. A lot Thank of male propositions turn out to be autocorrect. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments? All right, so we have a motion to approve the May minutes. All uh, in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Unanimous, thank you. Thanks so much, Pat. You're yes. We, I haven't received a Hopkins report, so we'll move on. So under old business, the Juneteenth event, would you like to talk about what, what we've done? Sure. Um, Wayne, can you hear Pat okay? I can. Good. Um, we developed a flyer. Kayla developed a flyer and sent it. Can you talk about that? I mean, together we worked on the flyer, <coughs> finalized it, and then you distributed it. So I, I think we both have done that. So Pat went to that, the Valley Advocate and posted the event. I went to the Gazette and sent them the flyer, but I also sent it to all of the faith institutions in the community, um, the senior center, the principals of the two schools, and Annie McKenzie, um, I'm not thinking of anywhere else that I've sent it, but it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, cool. I sent an invitation to every select board member and anyone listed on the town website that had an email address and just extended a personal invitation and attached the flyer. Wow. All right. Right. We went, Pat and I went to the library. I just wanted to make sure before we publicize this that we weren't going to have any issue getting the technology to work and knowing how to operate the technology. So we went over and Patrick helped us out and it, it'll work great. Good. I'm sorry I'm going to miss this. Oh well. Well, you can, do you have Netflix? Uh, no, I don't have any of those uh -huh. subscription things. I, I wonder if there are other, other ways 
to see Maybe. it. Maybe once my daughter is settled in at Chicopee, I'll be able to go down to her house and watch stuff on her subscription. Perfect. <laughs> but it's for for anyone in the community who's watching the series we're referring to is called High on the Hog. It's a Netflix uh, mini series, four episodes, which trace the contributions starting in Benin in Africa to uh, mostly food based, but there's a lot of culture around it, um, how that has impacted food culture mm -hmm. uh, and other areas of culture in the US. Um, and so the episode that we're going to see as a community is the final episode, which uh, is set in Texas and goes into some detail about the history of Juneteenth and some of the traditions involved in celebrating it. And there will be treats. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do red velvet cupcakes. And also, so the traditions involve a lot of red food. Oh, and uh, so I'm going to do red velvet cupcakes. And I'll make a red, um, they have different beverages, like hibiscus tea is traditional, or like a watermelon drink. So that, that will be part of the event as well. I'll be out of town that day, but I will bring by some brownies. And it's not red, but they're yummy. You can't go wrong with brownies, can you? Good. Great. Great. And I picked up some other red drinks. I found the red soda and um, also some seltzer and some other red drinks. And I thought I would make a, a gluten free red velvet something. Oh, oh brilliant. Wow. brilliant. Right? So, brilliant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, so anything else on the Juneteenth event? I'm looking forward to it. All right, under new business. Um, I was hoping that we would talk as a group about if and how we might want to respond to comments that were posted by a member of our select board on Facebook regarding um, affordable housing. And I'm wondering if everyone here has seen the direct quote from the Facebook post. I, I think it'd be good idea to read it into the minutes. Okay. Do you have it? I do. And this was public. This was, uh, you know, I, I accessed it. Um, a, a community member said something to me, and I looked, and I was able to easily access it. Well, I'll read it verbatim. Facebook, right? Yes. They want to redevelop the mall into apartments and all kinds of stuff, molly on affordable housing, which means more crime, more crap in town, Amherst Chamber of Commerce. To me, that's concerning. Yeah. I don't understand the reference to the Amherst group. I, I don't either, but um, I, I, I don't know. Does anyone here know what that reference to the Amherst Chamber of Commerce might have been? Well, Molly used to be a member. Oh. That's all I can think of. OK. Well, there, there are several things there that bother me. Um, you know, the first is that affordable housing means, quote, more crime, more crap. Um, yes. And that's very, I think, offensive language. And also really sort of um, links uh, and I'm not even going to say poverty because affordable housing is not necessarily about poverty. Right. It's just about affordable housing with uh, prices skyrocketing. But I think inherent in that comment is that assumption that affordable housing means we're getting, quote, poor people in town and therefore poor people uh, commit crime. Right. That's more than anyone, any other group in, in our society. So I think that's, that's very offensive, but I'm, I'm not sure how we get select board members to speak more, well, first of all, they, 
Yeah, I think it's disrespectful for any select board member to speak so disparagingly of another segment of our population. Yeah. And it sets a very poor tone. And, um, and it's not seemly, actually, I think, for an elected public official to do right. that. Yeah. And that's not the tone that we want to, I believe, no. set here in town. Right. I am not sure, um, therefore, about what sort of training people need to undergo. But sometimes I even feel that with training, you know, people just kind of can sit there and say, well, I went to training and I'm okay, and, and still not understand the significance of their language. Mm -hmm. um, but this definitely falls under DEI yeah. and, um, and how we address the use of offensive language mm -hmm. when it comes up. Anyway, it's like having a, we talked about this one other time, uh, if, if a uh, member of the community reported being harassed, right. you know, we, we're, we're not law enforcement, we're, we're not gonna go out there and do something, but we cited that example in another community where uh, a, a woman was harassed because of the, her skin color mm -hmm. by a neighbor who wrote very offensive things on her fence or whatever. Yeah. And finally, uh, the police chief came out and yeah. spoke to the woman. I mean, and, and she felt a heard, and um, the, I think the, the 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 chief met with the person who did that, and and then that was the end of it. I mean, there was never any more offensive language or gestures. Um, this is not something, obviously, that, that goes to that level. You're not going to call the police yeah. chief on this. Right. Um, but it is a, a very disparaging remark that would be hurtful to a lot of people who already live in this town, not to mention anybody who would like to live and work here but can't afford to because right. we don't have enough affordable housing. Wayne is raising his hand. I find it a kind of unhinged remark, and if if we were to do anything, one of the things I would suggest is to ask this person what those words mean. Mm. Um, mm. I just find it hard to understand what the point was. I know the references, I know what we assume it means, but it is not a coherent sentence. Um, at the very least, I would like us to ask her what she meant. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, because I know one response that I've read about being effective when somebody tells a an offensive joke in, at work or in a you know at a dinner or something. Instead of laughing at it, you go, "Why is that funny?" and get them to explain. Because any joke you explain isn't funny anymore, and you get them to explain it, and then they have to basically they're saying in their own words what they just said that was offensive. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, a person will realize, oh, <laughs> I really put my foot in it. And yeah. it to, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to affirm Wayne's suggestion. Now, yeah. you know Sarah's yeah. affirmation. Um, it, I, I'm not really sure what it means. I mean, I, yeah, I, it is I, enough to. I, I'm a relative newcomer to Hadley, so I've tried to learn, you know, seek understanding, and there has been back and forth um, about initiatives in the town, mm -hmm. um, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, there have been comments on Facebook, again on Facebook, um, not elected officials, but residents talking about we don't want Hadley to be like Amherst or Northampton. I don't exactly know what that means either, mm. having lived in both those towns. Um, so anyway, I think there's a, there's, a, um, there's a need. I would agree with Wayne's comment. There's a need to discuss this, I guess. And um, I go, would go back to what you said, Margaret. Th this falls to me in the area of diversity. Right. In a, in a town that's diverse, um, in a town mm -hmm. that has a level of economic diversity. Right. And, and one of the things, I'm going on and I apologize for that, that I learned when I first moved here at a baseball game 
is a woman whose son was on the same team as my grandson, who grew up in Hadley and said she can't afford to live in Hadley. And she has to rent, a, she can't afford to buy in Hadley, she has to rent a house in Hadley. She and her husband both work full time and they can't afford to buy a house in Hadley. And I remember really being disturbed by that. Yeah. And that has come up again. So the, I, I feel that there's a lot here to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think anybody wants cr more crime in Hadley. Right. But to affiliate that with, with the, you know, economics is, right. feels discriminatory to me. Right. You know, so I, I would yeah. just think this needs to be talked about more yeah. within the context of our group, certainly, and maybe with, with members of the select board. Yeah. Randy, with you here, can I ask, is there any policy when select board members um, speak in such a manner, you know, like through HR or, you know, is there any training that... Um, There's none that I'm aware of, but I know we're talking about implementing something of that nature for for this very reason so uh, yeah mm -hmm. I'll keep you posted on that um, I'll, I'll we'll have to talk to Jane and get get it on an agenda so that we can discuss it okay. and then uh, I think it's a good idea Wayne is raising his hand at the very least I would like to see us ask this select board member uh, to explain that comment, yeah. that public comment. Uh, and it's my understanding that as a select board member, um, she is responsible to the town for what she says in public. Um, I think, I, I think it's, yeah, I, we could ask, at least ask, what was this comment about? It's a public comment. You are a select board member. You are representing the town of Hadley. What do you mean by this? Yeah. Is there also something about <clears throat> maybe the DEI can formally ask the select board to look into this mm -hmm. and to, um, I mean, you know, uh, make a more sort of formal um, complaint, I guess, to the select board? Okay, so the way I think that would be most appropriate is to talk to the town administrator. Uh, she's the first line to go through and then she can either answer the questions for you. If not, then she would bring it before the board, as I understand it. I'm relatively new to this position, so I'm not, I'm not all there yet with the, the procedures and policies. Uh, but I know that that is the best way to do it so that we don't get, for instance, individual select board members trying to answer your questions right. mm -hmm. uh, because that's not what we're all about. Right. Right. So, but I would be happy. I mean, I, I've got to see Carolyn in the next day or two. I can certainly bring that before her if you would like. Yeah. So, do, do I understand that we should not ask the select board member what she meant as a public statement. Is she not responsible for explaining that to the town? I don't know the answer to that, Wayne. Um, I understand you, everybody's concern, and the, my my the one thing that comes to mind to me about this whole situation is. Was she acting as a select board member or as a private citizen? And I realized that we as select board members get held to a higher standard. Uh, but is there, and I'm, I'm just throwing this out there, is there a time when we are just private citizens? Uh, I know that when I was moderator, that if somebody from the select board had, you know, they, they present articles. And then if they have a comment that they want to make that's not necessarily in tune with the select board, it's their personal opinion, they need to make the audience aware that I'm speaking as a private citizen right now, not as a member of the select board. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know where the line gets drawn in that situation. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, like I said, I'll be happy to talk to Carolyn and see what she says. And I can report back, I can email 
somebody I know I have Pat's email with her invitation to Juneteenth uh, and I'll let you know what what the next step needs to be Thank you. Good. Uh, I, I would I would like this not to get buried no problem Wayne I'll, I'll take care of it in the next couple of days thank you so much you're welcome all right anything else about that issue Our, I just want to be clear that we this group should not take the initiative to reach out directly to the select board member until we've kind of gone to the administrator I believe so yes okay. that sounds yes. right I mean I you know just in thinking about where it could end up mm -hmm. Before the election, all kinds of stuff started coming out on social media. Right. And to engage just asks for trouble. Yeah. So I think it makes sense just to wait and let it go through the proper channels. And you know, I will I will talk to Carolyn and I will get back to you folks. Yeah. And then you can decide how you want to deal with it, whatever answer I give you. And to your knowledge, no one else has raised a concern about this particular statement? Uh, th there are people in town that have, yes. You're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, the only other big thing is that I thought it would be important um, to go over procedural tasks since Margaret and I are stepping down, things that need to be very clear for the committee. Um, so I'll go over what I know of, and Margaret, you may have stuff to add. Uh, so we are required to approach the town clerk, Jess Bank Nabel, um, and so that she can post a meeting and the official posting has to be at least two full business days in advance of the meeting. So um, what that means is reaching out to Jess with a, um, a doc, dot doc uh, format, the agenda. If there's a Zoom link, the Zoom link would be part of that and just request that she post it. And I've always been trying to do that at least a week in advance, just in case of any disruption in the schedule. And then she responds just a really quick received and posted, and you know that you're good to go. Well, unfortunately, that's not something I can volunteer for since my computer does not seem to handle dot doc stuff very well at all. I can't I, do anything with it. I can volunteer to do that. Um, but I think it should be that um, it should fall to a specific part of the committee. It should fall to the, to the chair of the committee or whoever's going to chair the meeting. Um, I, yeah, I think I think it, it begs the question of, of what's going to be happening from here on with the committee. Um, yeah. You know, the other thing I, I would also suggest is until such time as um, there is a permanent chair that the chair rotate every month. This might be something. I don't know how um, you, Pat, Mark feels about it, but then Pat's always doing the minutes too. Right. So, yeah, it's hard to do that. um, that's a lot of work. How many people typically come? How many members typically come to your meetings? Five, two, Five. three, no, five, six. Okay. Mark Dunn is usually, yeah, yeah. and Wayne is well, Wayne is usually, yeah. yeah. So, what should happen is when you guys are this is your last meeting, so at the next meeting. 
everybody that's in attendance will vote how to reconfigure the committee and they'll decide how they want to do the if you want my two cents worth, rotating the chair is not necessarily a great idea. Okay. Right. I don't know how intense things are here as far as keeping track of whatever the chair does, but if you, you, you know, somebody gets in the mode and then they do it for a month and then, oh, now it's your turn and I, I gotta figure, now they have to figure it all out and on and on it goes and Point by the time it yeah. comes around, okay, now I remember how to do it, but right. it just, it it's, could be a little cumbersome. Well, I'll go on to the other tasks that I thought of. Um, so we, we started our own portion of the town website. Um, and we've, I haven't been very good about updating and ma maintaining it, but there's some, there's some good stuff up there. Um, but to access that, that is through Jennifer James who can provide, uh, provide you with access. Yeah. So she'll give you uh, <clears throat> a, uh, a password, in which case you just go on to the town website and she'll show you how to do that. And also how to upload the agenda, that sort of thing, the minutes, whatever. And then finally we created our own Gmail um, and for anybody who wants to take over accessing that, I can give you the, Margaret and I have the, the password for that. I will also make sure, I don't think I posted the, um, the handout from the town, uh, you know, that we gave to the town, town meeting. I don't think I posted that on our webpage, but I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe all the other stuff that, you know, that were documents that we created, like the, um, you know, the CDEI, you know, the, the oh, yeah, that big report that didn't right, the report that, that I, you know, had done. So that I think is already up there. Okay. And I will make sure that this last document is up there. Um, and again, as Kayla said, Jennifer is the one who would give whoever uh, a new password to access the DEI um, part of the page. Again, if that's going to mean handling a doc, a dot doc kind of thing, I'm not going to be able to. Is your email address on the town's webpage? Mm-hmm. But CDEI, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's on it's on the landing for our page. It says, uh, you know, it, people can reach us through that email. We we get a little bit of email, but not yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. um, and is there any interest that you guys are aware of of people wanting to take your places? No, in fact, um, at the at the town um, meeting, we said, you know, anyone interested in coming aboard, but uh, as far as I know, there's been no inquiries. Yeah. Wayne, you had your hand raised. I'm just wondering if this is not the point to say le the lack of interest indicates that maybe this committee is ahead of its time and we should wait until there is more interest or... Uh, for interest from the community to be part of it, uh, structure. Um, I, I find myself wondering how it is we're going to do something different to solicit memberships when we haven't been successful so far. And is this a sufficient amount of time to determine whether this committee is needed in the community now or not. So, Randy, can I ask a question? Because you were sort of alluded to this, but when Kayla and I stepped down, um, 
should there be another meeting where then the remaining committee members decide whether to continue or to dissolve? They can, they can do whatever they, they choose. They can choose, at okay. Meeting, at that meeting, yes. Yeah. But that would require another meeting? Yeah, I would think so. It's, it's uh, I don't know how you w work your open agenda. I mean, it, it's not like there's a hundred people out there that are wanting to know what's happening. So, but I think I should probably look into that for you as well, just to be safe. Um, I mean, if you all decided to get up and walk away tonight, I mean, there's no nothing anybody can do about that. Uh, but. I guess it would be best to, to deal with it in the appropriate fashion. Well, our tradition is to have a meeting the, the first non-holiday Monday of the month. So I don't know when July 4th falls this year, but it would be the first, first non-holiday Monday in July we would be expecting to meet as a group. Would there be a public way to July fourth um, actually is the let first people know so that the, at that meeting the decision will be made whether to continue the work of this committee and to solicit other people who are interested in to work to join us for that committee uh, with the implication that if no others join we will not have a committee anymore. You can put but it I'd on. I like it to be public. It's, I like people to have a chance if they are waiting to comment and to be a part of this to actually say so if we're going to have this other meeting. So get your agenda together as early as you can, Wayne, and then get it posted on the website and hope for the best. Okay. And make, make what you just said part of the agenda. Okay. Oh, now that's a great idea. If that agenda was ready like three or three and a half weeks or so, or even four weeks since there's a Monday holiday before the meeting, we could print it out and maybe, is there a bulletin board at the library we could stick it up or any other places where we could stick it up? Yeah, in here. Let people know that are just, uh, yeah, you know, put it in front of people where they already come to look at stuff. Because... A lot of times, you, it's easy to say, oh, it's all on our website. But you have to actively drill into that website knowing that there's something you're there looking for. And this isn't that kind of thing. That's for a, minutes of a meeting you know took place and you're curious about. You know, This is like, hey, here's this new thing you might want to try. That needs to be in your face. Yeah, well, I'll so. ask. Jennifer also, she, there's a place she can post the fact that there's yeah, in town hall two, maybe. two resignations and that there's spots that need to be filled. Right. Um, and maybe a part of that announcement would be these need to be filled for the committee to function. Right. Yeah, if, yeah if okay. Ready. Yeah, I can do that. No, I guess a point of clarification, this committee was formed by the select board. Right. It's not just a group of citizens who want to actually, you know, discuss and address these issues. So I would ask if in fact it should go back to the select board as a as an issue. That there's been some change in the committee structure and um, I guess Personally, I would like to hear from the select board that this is an important group mm -hmm. to the town. Yeah. And maybe the select board would even invite individuals they know to join the group. Mm -hmm. ah. You know, it. it, it <coughs> go ahead, Wayne. Good idea. I want to second that. I think that's great to get them involved. That is a good idea. Well, our next meeting is the 15th. And I will speak to Jane and see if she can get something on the agenda to discuss that. Thank you. Okay. It may be a good
good idea whose time has not come. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Wayne, and it's it's sometimes it's difficult to no matter what the committee is, to get enough people to have the time to put into it to make it viable. Yeah. And it's, it's always difficult, no yes. matter whether it's the town or a church mm -hmm. or a whatever. Yeah. There's a few people that do everything. and It's the squeeze. Yeah. Are there... Any other questions that come to mind under this procedural tasks thing that um, the remaining members feel concerned about? I would also say that anyone can email me if there's questions that Same. come up. Same. I've, I've really enjoyed this work and I especially I've enjoyed getting to know the other people that are interested in yeah. this work and uh, that's yeah. that fabulous people yeah 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 I so second I'm that definitely mutual thank you for the opportunity yeah uh, I do have a question who will take the lead in uh, getting the word out about the future of the committee shall we uh, is it sufficient what we've said, Randy? Is that sufficient for you to bring to the select board? Yes. Yeah, I will bring it to town hall. I'll start with Carolyn and then talk to Jane and get it on our agenda so we can discuss it there. How okay. will this, may I ask how this would impact the comments that we talked about earlier by a select board member? Will this have, uh, I mean, will this still be looked at? Yes, I will still, that will not go away. Okay. Just because you are going away doesn't mean that that question will go away. Okay. Uh, on that point, I feel if if it was needed for this committee to stay in, to remain functioning in order to deal with that comment, uh, I would be happy to do whatever it took to make that happen. I don't want that to be buried. As long as you have committee members, I mean, then you can move forward in whatever direction you want to do. So, okay. And any individual citizen, even if this committee were to not be moving forward, any individual citizen on this committee could approach the select board and say, "What's what's going to happen with this?" Right. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other open agenda items? I would just like to quickly ask if if the other committees in town, Randy, are they all open and any resident can, I mean, some are some are appointed, right, and elected. Some are elected, is that right? So if, you, if you're on a committee, you're either elected or appointed. appointed. Mm -hmm. And the, the elected ones are the committees, the planning board, the select board. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's... Board of Health. Board of Health, yeah. And then most of the other ones are all appointed. And the way that process works is someone gets their, shows their interest to the select board, and then if there's more than enough people to fill the committee, we have to sort through them and decide who we think is the best fit. I ask because I've been thinking about this since, since Margaret and Kayla informed us that they were going to step down. It would seem to me that it would be helpful to have representatives on this committee almost from different parts of, of Hadley. Mm -hmm. Because the, the topic is, it's not a narrow, narrowly focused task-oriented committee. It's right. a pretty broad topic. And, you know, I just wonder if that would be a way to solicit participation. So there would be somebody from the schools. Mm -hmm. Um, I know every department is very thinly staffed in Hadley, and it would be another commitment, but I would think that we would benefit as a committee and the town would benefit if we had informed people sitting on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know Chief Mason, in my opinion, has done a marvelous job yeah. addressing some issues, and mm -hmm. it would be 
possible that he could send someone. You know what I mean? Like, so it's a representative group of people who could who could work together on these issues. Right. And I think that goes well with just about any situation we have in town, where the more people you can get involved, the more opinions you have, right. the better the committee is going to be. Uh, but it, as you said, it's everybody's stretched really thin, yeah. and thus the reason you two are leaving, I'm sure. Uh, and it's hard to get people to to come to meeting after meeting after meeting. Although, you know, I, I feel the same way. Uh, I, I I work all day long. I've got meetings, whatever. But when I come to something like this, it's usually very enlightening. And I enjoy the conversation, I enjoy meeting the people, and getting to understand the issues and concerns better. And until you do it, you don't realize what I'll call the benefits. So if we can convince people to try it, then maybe you can get some more, once, you know, if they come and say, oh yeah, that was, that was fun, I enjoyed that. It was very enlightening. So, yeah. As someone who works regularly with younger people in my day job. Well, you work with Pat? Right. <laughs> Touche, Randy. Nicely Touché. Done. Nicely done. <laughs> you're, you're back. You're, you're back. back. Okay, yeah. good. Full um, circle. Yes. Um, it's just, it's been eye opening and heartwarming and encouraging to me to see how deeply younger people feel the importance of DEI mm -hmm. and so one of one of the areas I feel like I've not been successful is to open this group to that part of our community uh, we did a, we had a really nice little partnership for Columbus and indigenous mm -hmm. peoples so we've had a little, we've had our moments, right. but I think and the certainly ongoing in the beginning with you know with the young woman from the high school mm -hmm. and yeah. our teacher liaison, yeah. they're, they're fabulous. I mean, what's mm -hmm. happening in town is some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's trying to get everyone sort of together and working um, as a, as a as you know collaboratively as a unit and promoting each other's activities. That has been difficult. Yeah. I think the people are out there. I think the right yeah. people are out there. Yeah. And they just have to be found. That's right. All right. I have to leave, ladies. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. your time. We appreciate everything you've offered. Not a problem. And my Contact information should be on the town's website if you need to get a hold of me for anything. Mm -hmm. And send me your agenda every month. And mm -hmm. you know, if I've got some time, I'll. And I'm not spread too thin that week. <laughs> I'll come. Thank you. Randy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank, Randy. thank you both for your service yeah. to date. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank you too. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other open agenda? So I didn't. Did you want to just come up with the text. Sarah, you're not able to go to Juneteenth. Right, because I'm going to be out of town. All okay, so I guess it's me. Wayne, is Wayne able to come? Are you going to be at Juneteenth? I think so. And if I'm back in town, okay. I will be there. But mm -hmm. I'm committed to Boston right now. Okay. I have been for a while. So if I can get home. So we actually to... have people coming over um, from, my, from my work. Okay. And they're supposed to, we're supposed to have something at my house three to six. Okay. And then my plan is to come as soon as I can okay. wiggle out. Yeah, that's sort of where I was getting at. So we'll probably meet like six thirty, quarter to seven. Yeah. At the library. At the library. Okay. And what about a next meeting date? Um, is that that would that would make it the eleventh of June? Yeah, July. July. I mean, sorry, July. It was it the 11th? Is that what it was? Yeah, that's 11th. The, the yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Because if we can sketch out what would be on that thing that has to go to the town to be posted, if we can sketch that out as much as possible, either right now or within the next few days, and get it up right away, instead of waiting till two days before, get it up you know, as quickly as possible so that printouts like this could be posted, that might help bring somebody out of the woodwork. We would be happy uh, to have. Somebody tell me the date of that next meeting. I'm sorry. July, July 11th. I think it's an issue for you if you want to attend the Coral Conductors Conference in Worcester. I'm probably not going to do that. Go to Worcester. Oh, okay. It would be at what time? 5.15 to 6.30. Okay. Presumably we could meet here again. Somebody would just need to reach out to Jane. It hasn't, it hasn't been a problem. And what we used to do also at the Board of Health was we would meet outside. Uh, right. You know, the tables, yep. chairs, and we would just have our meeting out there when the building was locked. That was last summer. Right. Um, but just throwing that out as a suggestion. Yeah. But if we want to have the, the recording, can that happen outside? or? I don't know. You'd have to talk to John about yeah. that. But um, I think there are people who do find that valuable. Yeah, that's a, that's something that actually I didn't mention in the in the agenda was that Hadley Media, um, oh, right. Drew and John at Hadley Media, I I just shot them an email about this meeting and asked if they could record. Are they recording? Yes. Well, if we could go back to the July 11th meeting, mm -hmm. we could also just make it July 18th. Uh, no, he'll, he'll be away. Oh, you'll be away July, July 11th through July? No, 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 no. He's, he's available the 11th. Oh, you are available the 11th. Yeah, oh, he's sorry, not, I I'm going to a conference and he's not. I, I, go. I misunderstood. Okay, so July 11th. I mean, I think the other issue would be on the agenda to discuss whether we want to keep the Monday meeting, do we want to keep the time. I know Joanne, for Joanne, this time does not work. Oh, right. Because it's business. too close to the end of her work day and she can't make it work. So right. I would suggest that would be an agenda item going forward. You know, look at the day and the time of the meeting. So, and I would hope that we could get the remaining people at the July 11th meeting so we could talk about that. So what time would make would be better? We could start a little bit later. Six fifteen, did you say? What time? Yes. Is, would that be better? I think it would be better. Six fifteen. That, that would be fine with me. Yeah, maybe we should just try that and then see if Joanne can come. Yes, that sounds like a good plan, Wayne. Okay. Okay. Maybe check with her and find out. Yep. Okay. On that day, what would be a good time for her? Before okay. Before we actually set it, try and, instead of guessing when would be a good time for Joanne to come and then hoping, ask her what would be a good time and then make it so. Okay, I'll do that. Wayne, and you're, you'll do a, an agenda for that meeting? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I have in my notes that you volunteered. Yeah, we'll. we'll I'll work with you on it, okay? Work by myself. Okay. I want to make sure that everything we need to include is included, but we can be in touch about that, Okay, right? yes, absolutely. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Is it time for a motion to adjourn? We make a motion, we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.